living. Yo, yo, welcome to the No Limit Podcast, also known as the Gone for a Jog Cast, the Lawn Full of Sod Cast, the Epstein Flight Log Cast, the Air Full of Fog Cast, and the Care Full of Tot Cast. It's the Oven Mitt Any Bull and the other kid, No Limit Eddie. What up? We're live from the house your grandmom died in. First episode back, me and the bull. What's good? Damn, dude, I'm rusty as hell. Like when you said any bull, I took like a whole full second to look at the camera and deuce. And do your piece. I'm usually spot on. This time I got I got locked in the gaze of the intro. Even though we've now moved on to No Limit AD, we can't forget about the tropes of No Limit BC that have to continue. What are the tropes of No Limit BC? Number one, Dude, the intro. Like number prints. two, the there's hand gesture. on my wall, like at the top though. But there's nothing there. That is absolutely scary as fuck. Why what are you bringing saying? that up right now? No, what were you saying? Hand prints on the wall. Nah, like, we're not that. moving past that. What are you talking about? Before no, this house was... is haunted. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's, but apparently this house is haunted. New crib, new location for the podcast. Yeah, yeah, and... actually. Well, last week we filmed the first episode here, but we actually finally got out of the fucking little tight studio we were in. It's haunted. It is the house your grandma died in, though. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> died in here. This house is haunted. I mean, so I hear. Nothing. I mean, I was, I was going to the bathroom in the powder room, and I felt like... The powder room. That's what, like, it's usually... That's how you actually pronounce it. But someone, like, touched me, like, right in my back. Like, I was, like, standing there, like, peeing. And, like, I felt someone just, like, press in on my back. But, like, press in enough to where, like, it definitely... someone being a ghost. Like, it wasn't wind. Like, it wasn't my cat. You know what I mean? Somebody, like, it felt like they just pressed my back. And nobody else was home at the time. I was just down. I was in the living room by myself. You know, nobody was there. So that was the only kind of weird paranormal activity I, I, I faced. But apparently other people in this house have felt some things. Yeah, that's some crazy shit. This is the first time you're telling me. I mean, me that. this is like a this is like a like, As you have three candles lined up behind your head like you're performing a seance. Bro, I don't mess with that stuff. I don't I don't I don't like seances. I don't like messing with tarot cards, tarot cards, however you want to pronounce it. I don't believe any of that stuff should be touched. Like a seance, like you then you welcome the spirits into your house and they like stick to you and then they like take over like dolls, action figures. Cause I have bad luck too with that stuff. You know what I mean? And I have like enough anxiety that they'd be like, they would like crack me and I would turn into like, I would start foaming at the mouth and like You screaming. see shadow people? Nah, I never see you shadow people. You ain't one people. of them people that claim you see like shadows in the corner of your Do room? I sound nasally? No. I feel like I sound nasally. Doesn't matter. I'll be able to cut that shit up, bro. I, uh. Media are. What do you mean cut, cut it up? Chop it Just up. Just put my Mix voice all the way high pitched. <laughs> Yours is totally normal. Mine's just like a chipmunk. Um, nah, I don't see shadow people. Do you? No, but I see people that I talk about. They do see them. You know what? Like somebody told me before, they were like, "Yeah, you know, I was, I was, I'm, I'm, I, I would like lay in my bed, and at the end of my bed, I would see this man in a top hat." I'm like, "No, you didn't. Like, you <laughs> no, did you not didn't. see this." I told the story before about the wolf, though, that I had a real vivid dream when I was a kid that I got eaten by a wolf. Yeah, you did felt tell me so that. See, real. Maybe that's a dream. Like you're, up, but you know, it's real. a dream. Like this person was like, "No, like I saw this man in a top hat in my room." I was like. There's just no way. I feel like if you actually saw that, you would have told me that the first time I ever met you. Like, people like hi, my name's Greg. You know, the one this crazy time I was in my room. <laughs> like, <laughs> I feel like that would be the first thing I know about you. Know, something that, like, crazy happened. It's so funny. There's so many things like that, that people that people have that, like, they instantly tell you. And there's so many things about people that like, they'll never tell you. Everybody has so much interesting <laughs> shit they'll never tell you. Because they don't think it's interesting anymore because they've probably told it a billion times or something. I feel like I've told it all. That's one thing about the No Limit podcast that I can really hold true to the, to the term No Limit. I pretty much have never held back a story. It might be f- pushed far back. I might purposely withhold something until like the 45th minute because I know the majority, the 90% of people are not going to make it to that 45th minute. Yeah. But if you stick around, you get there's that, some, you get that you get those gems. Nuggets. <laughs> you get those gems. I'll, I'll, gems. I'll withhold a story. You know I, that. Uh, no, I think I'm the same way. I think I told enough stories. I talked about a few shit in myself stories in this yeah. podcast. See, we get into ourselves in the second half. We talk about other people in the first half. What? We talk about other people in the first half of the podcast. What people? Anybody. The shadow entities? Like third parties. Third parties? What about the people in the subway? Third parties. The people in the Dude, subway. if you're riding the subway still, like, <laughs> I don't know. That's true. I think about that often because a couple years ago, I was on the subway a lot. I worked in Center City. I went to Temple and lived on Snyder. 
So I was on a subway often. I had this $96 SEPTA card that would fucking get me anywhere in the city that I wanted to for the whole month. That, I don't understand the appeal of New York City. Like, for that reason. Like, you're, like you in the city, it was convenient for you at the time to have that pass, right? Correct. Like, New York City, like, you just have to use public transportation. It's just not, it's just pointless to have your own car. If you live in, like, Manhattan, you know? Why? Because the parking situation is traffic, terrible. Traffic, which is stupid. And like, traffic. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, like, like to get around, it's just going to take you forever. Parking is probably harder. It's, it's, it's just a big city, so... Those videos of the New York subway station when it floods and the people are walking, those are crazy. Like the who New who York would go subway. get on the subway and how does it work that you somehow go down the stairwell, it's flooded with water, but then you make your way to the train and get on. What do you mean? Like obviously when you see those videos when the New York subway station floods and there's videos of people walking through the flood and the water's literally up to their waist and they're coming out up the stairs onto the street. They just got off the subway. How is the area by the stairs so flooded that it's up to their waist, but the trains down there are still just running? Like, there's not water down there. Because the government's not like controlling <laughs> it. There's no way. Because that, that doesn't make any sense. It absolutely makes no sense. But let's get to let's get to why you did bring up the subway. Because what have I had to say? What I have had to say recently? <laughs> you got instant beef. We gotta get the people got beef attitudes. Going. That's topic number one tonight. People got attitudes. Put it right here, real big, bubble letters. People got attitudes lately. So, fill me in. Tell me the story. Why? What happened to you that well, your blanket, that everybody blanket has saying that Everybody's got an attitude. Well, number one, I just think, let's just say, overarchingly, I've just seen a lot of people out in different phases of life where I see, you know, some people... When I'm out working, some people when I'm at the casino, some people when I'm out doing something like if I'm at like a place, like a restaurant or a show or something, different people. And they all just have had an attitude for one reason or one reason or the other. And because they're in different environments, their attitude is reflected in different ways. Like, for instance, like if you're talking about a guy who's playing poker, he might just have an attitude in that he's got like a sour look on his face. You can tell he's kind of tilted like and he's and he's just has that aura about him that he's that he's mad about something. Right. But another example, so add that example, and then another example would be that I was at a show this weekend at the Met. Shout out to Ashley Flowers. I went Who's to Ashley the, Flowers. Ashley Flowers, dude, she makes the best crime, um, crime mystery podcast, whatever you want to call it, like disappearances, killings, and all that. The one that I went to was called The Deck Investigates, but she's most famous for one called Crime Junkie. I heard a Crime Junkie. <laughs> Have you ever heard an episode? Real good. You should start from the beginning. Yeah, literally, the only it. podcasts I listen to are ones like I only listen to a podcast if it's funny. Right. Yeah. You know, I, I just I I don't get another one. So anyway, I'm at her show. She does a bunch of podcasts. She's most famous for Crime Junkie. The show was the deck, and the people there were just so unbelievably rude. Like it was crazy. Like I. I walked in the door and everybody, you know, how like when you're at somewhere packed, like a concert or something, like you kind of just like shimmy through. Everybody knows what the environment is. Like you're going to bump into each other. This you're is going a place to have where to like shimmy and it's not like seated to get to your seats. That's what I'm talking about. As soon as you go in, you're you're amongst a crowd. We got there oh, like 30 sure. minutes for the show, so everybody's shimmying past, like doing this, that, and the other, mm -hmm. trying to figure out how to get to their seat, what entrance they got to go through, and people's attitudes were just crazy like people were just saying crazy shit like they did not care like when people would bump into them it was almost as if you would not ever expect to be bumped into in a place like this like the the shit that people were saying on the way out the door it was kind of the same way some little lady just like an old lady <laughs> not little old she's probably like 35 everybody's just standing there like everybody kind of knows like all right we're going slow on our way out the door and out of nowhere, she just has like a freak out attack and goes, oh my God, I got to get out of here. I can't deal with this. And just starts crushing people going through, right? And then she gets stuck like near some point. And somebody was like, uh, no, that's fucking ridiculous. People think it's only about them or something. So loud that she can hear it. And I was just thinking, people are tense. Like, I already saw it on the way in. Did now this lady going them? nuts on the way out. This other girl who responded to her, yeah, she heard them and then like bitched out, didn't say anything, she didn't say just, just stood there and kind of stopped moving. 
Then somebody else at a different point of the show, after I said, when I walked in, it was a little weird vibe. That key story was from the very end. In the middle of the show, I walked back out through the thing where I just entered through and some girl was, I guess, complaining about an interaction that she had saying, I fucking hate bitches, yo. Why is everybody got to be so fucking rude? And it just solidified to me that something's going on. Now, I do think with that show specifically, I don't want to get too much into this, but I think the audience that it attracts is definitely people that already got to stick up their ass. <laughs> How so? Because if you, the show is like, a crime podcast, right? That it's like a strong, it's a strong female voice. Oh, and there's just a certain essence about it. Like I feel like I feel everyone like you're who's the there. No, I'm not. I'm got a further description. So very suburban. It's a high chance of somebody being a Karen. I was gonna say you're fan. going Karen territory. Yeah, it could be. Could be. Was there a lot of Karens there? No. Not in the sense that they look like it, but I feel like they all had Karen attitudes. A lot of Karen attitudes in the building that night. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, don't doesn't, doesn't every woman have a Karen attitude? No. <laughs> I no, being dead honest, I don't think everyone does. Nah, no, it's like a certain like what's the male equivalent to a Karen? Chad. What's a Chad though? A Chad is like super alpha, like faux hawk dude. Oh, uh, like bruh. Yeah. Like, bruh. Like uh, in the first Spider Man, when he fights that kid in the hallway and he like punches him, like, yeah, okay. So in all in all, is what I'm getting to <laughs> is that people got, so attitudes. got attitudes. So boom, at that show, people got attitudes. Other places out in the world, people got attitudes. What's going on right now? I think people. What's people, got people high strung? I feel like people have been high strung, intense, like for the past few years. Definitely ever since like the COVID thing. Like everybody got like kind of like, I don't know. Not up at like up in arms is the wrong word, but like everybody got the same attitude where it was like gung ho on fuck everybody else. I am I only care about me and and that's it. You know, I feel like people are worse on the roads. Like people do like I will have two feet of clearance and somebody no turn signal will just drift right in your lane. Yeah. Like you're talking about people have attitudes. A lot of road rude. rage that's out fucking, there right now. That's rude as shit, dude. Like, to cut anybody off, but to not signal to any... Like, it's it's actually like... You know, you can kill anybody. You can get in an accident. But people just don't even care. I feel like people don't care about that. People like... I'll see... I'll be driving, dude. And I'll be behind somebody who will just throw a water bottle out their window. Like, what kind of behavior is that? Like, am I crazy? Like, I feel like everybody litters, but... I could never just fucking take a piece Side of trash. Side note about that, I was straight up admit, sometimes I smoke blunts in my car. Sometimes I even have a cup that, like, I had a coffee or something, and I'll ash in it while I'm smoking. But I saw inside some dude's car today, he was sitting there smoking a cigarette, and he had the nastiest setup, like an ashtray overflowing with backwood roaches and oh, but you don't cigarette litter butts. You don't litter it. I'll take it out and throw it out when I can. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll use I it and just get you, rid of you, it. You, you, you take blunts and put them in a, a water bottle and, like, throw it out the window. No, no, no. Oh, well, that's savage behavior. Keep it in your car. That's just, like, messy shit. Like, sometimes, like, my car's... Most of the time, my car's pretty clean. But then there's there'll be times, like, uh, if I'm, like, depressed for, like, two weeks, my car will start to get filthy. Like, I'll have, like, water bottles accumulating in, like, bags of, like, trash and dunk, The key wrappers. sign of depression is water bottles everywhere. Water bottles everywhere and trash. Just having trash. That's why, like, people underestimate how, like... Just cleaning something up goes a long way. Right. You know, like working out gives you, uh, what's the? Dopamine. Dopamine, right? And it, it makes you feel happier. Like cleaning things up, if you clean your room, right? People, yeah. that's like the classic one. Clean your room. Get rid of your neck beard nest. If you clean your room, you your wake neck up. neck beard just, nest? Like, you wake up feeling better. Yeah, neck beard nest. You ever, like, you know what that is? I never heard about that. So a neck beard nest is like, typically a neck beard is like somebody who... Like plays video games, you know, like the World of Warcraft. Right, 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 right. That guy who's like sitting there's a neck beard, right? Yeah. Just sits there playing video games all day, you know, farting all himself, and his room just has Watch ice cream bowls and like soda cans and like all this stuff, and everything's like under his bed, like pushed. Just like that's a neck beard nest. Cum tails. Cum tails that drop like glass. <laughs> yeah, they just. Shh. 
I've never like socks I, that are so crusty, and every once in a while he'll be I like, never "Fuck it," and put like them on. Towel sock thing. <laughs> like, where does that come from? Why is that like a stereotype? Were you a fucking sock kid? What? Like, did you ever come in the socks as a kid? If you gotta, you gotta, bro. You actually did that? You actually like, jerked off into a Who sock? Who knows what situation is going to present itself that you gotta do that? But I can definitely say that I've been in one before. Really? I think I like put a sock on one time to do it, and I was like, "This is <laughs> this is stupid." I was like, I felt I felt kind of like ridiculous, like I was doing it's, way too much to come by myself. <laughs> to bring it full circle, is that something someone would say to you on the subway? You ever come in a sock before? Yo, buddy. You know, come on. <laughs> Yo, Yo, I had, buddy. I had a great, for the dude. Fucking... I had a great idea. Uh, <laughs> You're waiting for the L. Dude walks out. Yo, buddy. This is gonna. Hey, Yo, ever, buddy. You ever come in a sock? Before? Be honest with me, buddy. Look at me when I talk to you. You ever come in a sock? You're a young boy. Just tell me. Just let me know. <laughs> and he's getting so closer to you. Yeah, I'm just getting closer to you now. I just want to know. Did you? Uh, <laughs> did you come in a sock when you were a kid, boy? <laughs> No, I had the greatest idea though earlier for for a video is uh so I had the I, I was recently in a rental car. Right. And I dropped it off and they give you like a shuttle to your like uh to your car. Yeah, like my car was at collision center. So I had to go pick it up, but they gave like a shuttle, which is just a guy driving a minivan. And I got in there with another guy who was going to another shop, but he was like an older dude, high viz, like he was up, like a blue collar guy. And, uh, you know, like all, people like him, they're like old heads. They don't have time for jokes and games. Like he's out run, like no time he's for getting games. his rental car. Like he's trying to get his car. Like he's got no time for games. Just got off work. I wanted to just be like, man, I just wanted to fuck with them. <laughs> and like, just like tilt my phone. So that you can see them with the phone and be like, man, how about that? Margot Robbie, huh? And just, <laughs> and see what they say. And just see what they say. And see, like, see if if nobody answered, it's funny. <laughs> you know, if nobody answers, it's funny. It like whatever the old head says, like if he's like, oh man, man, I would like to get a crack at that or something. I'd be like, yeah, man, tight. And he's like, oh yeah, real tight. I'm like, no, man, my jacket's tight. What are you talking about? And he's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, Nothing. He said, well, Margot Robbie. Like, yeah, this is the new movie she's in. Margot Robbie. What are you talking about? You fucking perv. And like, go, just go there and see what happens. Like, what if I called him a fucking perv and like t- sp- spawn the whole thing on him? And then, <laughs> nah, I got out. a better one. What if the driver pulled out his phone and was like, oh my God, right? And he had pictures of her already ready. Yeah, he was like, he had all the news pulled out. Remember, like, the files came out of all the celebrity dudes like 10 years ago? Like, Bro, Jennifer I Lawrence and stuff got their stuff leaked. I literally. Want to hear what the people come up to you and say on the subway? <laughs> crazy <laughs> shit, dude. Like, <laughs> you're trying to go into this crazy Hollywood files shit. I'm like, bro, what are they going to say to you when they come up on the subway? They'll grab something like they'll have something, they'll have something like this, bro. They'll have something like this. And they'll be like, my daughter, <laughs> my daughter was born eight months early. This is the size of her diaper. Do you have any? <laughs> Do you have anything that she can use? <laughs> and you're like, like I would be in high school. I would be in high school with headphones on, and this guy would be in front of me, like some, some shit like this. You got to deal with that shit every day. So that's why I can't ride the subway no more. If you're still riding the subway, I yeah. like I the the last when time they I, really try to talk on the hard strings, they're like, yo, buddy, like let me be honest with you for a second, man. No, I'm honest. in a real bad spot right now. <laughs> I would never be doing this. I would never. I would. I swear, it hurts me to be doing this right now, dude. I'm in a real, real tough spot. I just need. I need two fifty to get on the bus, dude. When <laughs> someone's like really trying to level with you for two bucks, you know they really got, have made I horrible got two decisions. Do- I got two dollars. If you just got fifty cent, dude, that'll get me on the bus. You know you're <laughs> fucked when they come right up to you. When they come right up to you and they say their name, they introduce themselves immediately, like. Hi, my name's Dale. Listen, <laughs> like if they introduce, the, because they're trying to get, they're trying to tug on your heartstrings. They give themselves a name, so it's like, ah, uh, like my name's Dale. Like, I, I just, I just got here. My leg really hurts. I just gotta get something to eat. Like, like, what, like, what, like, what, like, what is the story? Where did you come from? The woodwork. Yeah, dude. I, I, I don't know how you could still ride that subway. 
And we don't even, that, that was my point earlier. We don't even live in New York City where it's like really crazy. Bro, they like have, Philly's like a, like but a New York subway. C- like Philly, they have the entertaining thing that we had talked about before where like the, the uncles are making their kids fucking dance and shit like and do flips on the subway for tips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But New York, they have crazy performances like that too. They have one where the dudes dress up as wrestlers and they'll have a match yeah. like in the subway car. Dude, did you ever <laughs> like grown men who like set up a speaker and dance in the subway? Did ever did that ever happen to you on yeah. a car? Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Like what a weird hustle. That's what you do all day long. How much could you make? You definitely gotta smoke crack before you do that. And there's like three. There's nothing you could be hyped up off of besides crack that could get you to break dance on the subway all day, every day. <laughs> <laughs> Dancing to like rump shaker. <laughs> like what? Fucking popping your shoulder behind your head and bringing it back. For and two- then no one acknowledges <laughs> it all day long. Everyone's just like this. Everyone's you know, like, in their phone like like this. Because you know the second you... And you, then when, it, when you're sitting in this seat like this and he grabs the thing and does a flip, you're like... For one second. <laughs> if someone's at, if someone's on the subway and they're saying, I was at ancient Egypt when they built the pyramids, the second you look at them, they're all on you. And now their entire story is going right to you. They're going to walk right up to you and they're going to start asking for money or they're going to just, they're going to threaten you, spit at you. That's why you can never look anybody in the eye or look anybody's way. Cell phones are the greatest invention ever to have for transportation. You ever been in a, any type of bad situation on the subway? Like gotten caught up in, you know, just something bad? Dude, I don't know. I've, I've, I've rode the subway so many times and I've rode it like at some sketchy times, like, you know, like the one to 3 a.m., the one to 4 a.m.s. Um, but I don't remember like ever having I've been pretty lucky in my life, knock on wood. Like I've I've been in rough areas at bad times and like the subway at bad times, nothing's ever I never got mugged. Like yeah. I never even got like yelled at. Like I never even got like you. You yeah. know, I never even like I never got nothing. Me neither. I never had nobody follow me. One time I did have somebody follow me up by temple when I uh in the pizza place. There. Yeah, that was. A, I don't know if I told a story on the pod, but that was a scary either. John. I feel like you might have told it on the podcast, bro. The dude was one thousand, one thousand and and ninety nine 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 percent following me for sure. He he immediately turned his whole trajectory and started and like just aimed toward me. Then when I went inside the pizza place, I don't know if he was just that retarded that he walked in and like looked <laughs> and didn't see me because I was dead right there. Retarded. But he he literally did like it looked like a TV show. Like he came in and like looked around and then left. And I was like, he's definitely waiting outside. Yeah, he was up no good. And I just left after that a little bit because I was like, eventually I gotta leave, bro. Like I can't just be in here bitching. Like if something happens, I gotta deal with it. And I just left, and then nothing. What ever, a terrible feeling you have to, like you have to just go into now because like all of a sudden this guy showed up. Like now you gotta be like, I gotta be ready for whatever happens to me. Yeah. Like, that sucks, dude. Those situations blow. They were going to keep making me buy slices to stay in. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, like people uh, do the fancy football punishment where they got to sit in a, like, a room for like 80 hours. Uh, I guess the only bad situation, which I told in the podcast, is when that guy got like stabbed in front of me. Remember that? At the Sunoco? Yeah. Like 30 seconds before I walked up. But, like, nothing happened to me. Nobody threatened me. Nobody came up to me. I mean, I've had people threaten me and like, I've had a knife pulled out on me, but it was in a fight. That's like, a hilarious story. You didn't tell that one on the pod. Nah. I don't think you did. No, really? No, you didn't. But that one was hilarious. I mean, if you don't want to tell the beginning part, you can just tell that part of how the dude randomly showed up. At yeah, the all right. So, yeah, no, it was like, uh, what was that? That wasn't that long ago. That was the summer. So. Fight breaks out. Fight's kind of over like, now. I don't know, dude. The more and more we film this podcast, the more it like it makes me sound like a degenerate. Like I get yeah, like I'm like I'm a bum. But uh <laughs> maybe I am. So like recently, like in August Bitty Bum Bum. <laughs> bum bitty 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 bum bum. Uh in August I got into a scrap and I was in a alleyway. Where was that? It was in Philly. It was by uh garage in Fishtown. Right, so we're in this alleyway, and like I'm kind of like there's like there's nowhere for me to like turn or nothing, cause like there's like now there's multiple people, I'm by myself, right, and then out of nowhere some guy comes up and he's tweaking, bro, like 
tweaking. Crack. And he's like, I'm getting a hundred dollars. I don't give a fuck. This is all I hear, right? I this is all I hear. And I like look over and this guy this guy's coming at me with a knife, dude. Like and I'm telling you I'm getting like 100. I didn't like I didn't and I'm not even trying to like say like I wasn't scared or anything like that. Like I I didn't move. I didn't even like step back. I'm literally just staring at this guy like this. <laughs> like bro i'm like this ain't happening i was like there is no way all this just happened and this guy's here now right but i'm getting a hundred dollars i don't dude. give like, a fuck and he's walking up like this like i'm getting a hundred right so he comes up to me and he's like uh you know fuck this fuck that i'm like dude i don't know what you're talking about and he was like you're gonna give me a hundred dollars or you're gonna get stabbed <laughs> I said, dude, I don't have a hundred dollars. And even if I did, I really just would not give it to you because and I don't know if I didn't think he really wasn't going to stab me or like I thought at the time somebody would come like yeah. intervene by the time. Like, or there was enough witnesses but there that he I wouldn't do it. I never felt like I was going to get stabbed. Like, even though it was happening, I never, I was never like, fuck, he's going to stab me. What kind of knife did he have? Was it like a pocket knife or like Dude, a scary it was like, it was, No, it, it wasn't, it wasn't like a pocket knife. It was like a steak knife, but <laughs> it was like a, it was like a vanilla handle, like a vanilla yeah. colored handle, you know, like you have like a black yeah, yeah, one, yeah. but it wasn't one of those knives with the ridges. It was like that real, like thin, sharp yeah. blade. If that makes sense. Yeah. I'm gonna send a picture up to you of like a knife like this. And you're gonna put it off your shirt, everybody knows. The blade. But, yeah, he came up to me. It came up to me like that, and he was like, "No, nah, I don't give a." F-. And he was like talking about the fight. He was like, "I don't give a fuck about none of that fight. I don't know nobody here. I'm just here to collect a hundred dollars and I'm out of here." And he said, "I don't care who gives it to me, but if I don't get it, you're getting stabbed." <laughs> and then like the people who I was fighting actually came <laughs> over and they were like, "Nah, man, chill. Yeah. He's cool." And then. <laughs> <laughs> this might be the funniest part of it all. I'm standing there, right? And they're like talking this dude up the ledge. I'm still like like I just haven't I haven't moved. I haven't like changed my facial expression. You're thinking like why don't you just give him that? I'm it? so just like and this is after a whole fight, a whole scrap. I'm at this point, I'm so confused as to what happened. Because I didn't start any of it. I kind of just got dusted in. And uh I never started, by the way. Come on. Um the guy, one of the guys had, he was like shorter with like a mullet and <laughs> <laughs> I had smoked a cigarette with him actually yeah. Yeah. right before we fought. Yeah. Like right before we fist fought, <laughs> we were smoking a cigarette. And after, uh, after the guy left, I told him, he was like, dude, I can tell you're a good guy. His shirt's ripped. His guy's like, <laughs> but like, he's staying, he's like, I can tell you're a good dude, man. You know, I'll be seeing you around. <laughs> I was like, well, he's I'll like, but, but he was like, get out of here though, because like it's getting crazy. I'm like, yeah, I'm definitely <laughs> leaving. But yeah, he was literally standing there, ripped up shirt, like fucking busted lip, and he's like, yeah, man, I can tell you're a good dude. I wonder what inspired probably crack that person to run up and say, I need a hundred. I don't give a fuck. Like, it's gotta be. If I hit him, he wouldn't have moved. No way, you know, like if if I if I just like called his bluff and like I moved in on him and just like just <laughs> bro, either bro, way, if you call his bluff, might, you could still get stabbed. I feel like all my might, I feel like he would just he wouldn't he would just ate it. He was tweaked, dude. He was like I, I it was it was unstoppable. That's why I was like I'm just I'm this isn't happening. Yeah, he definitely had attitude. I kind of just bypassed it in my mind. But that was way back. He wasn't having that attitude during that. That was actually, times. you know, like the other time I had a knife pulled on me was like in March. So like this was like twice in like a, a five month span. Yeah, that but had, the like, fact knife... that you've had a knife pulled out on you twice, like you got. I mean, I didn't, the first time I didn't have a knife. You got to get yourself in the better situations. Both times was in shady areas too. Just can't be in shady areas. I think actually that's what you, you should. Uh, that's what you should give up for Lent. Having knives pulled on you. <laughs> Well, I consider it done. Or maybe have more knives put on you. Make you a better person. Tougher. I mean, it's experiences that I had now. I could say I had a knife pulled on me. I mean, yeah. for what and, it's worth. And so far, you know that nobody's really about I'm it. Two and nobody's going to do it. I'm 2-0. Oh. You'd do it for a loss. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, chill. Knock on wood, dude. <laughs> Everybody that, knock on wood. Is that even wooden? Yeah. Yeah, it's got to be. 
I don't know. You know what was wooden? The cross. The cross. Speaking of the cross, uh, so every year I find out about Ash Wednesday by just walking somebody. Like this year, I was in the supermarket and I was, and I walked by a family and they all had ashes on their forehead. And I was Bro, like, that used to be me tell every me how year. I, tell me how I saw motherfuckers in a casino with Ash Wednesday ashes on their head. Like, pick a side, dog. We're like another thing. Like, you're still riding the subway in 2023. You're still getting ashes. Come on now. I'm not. I'm like, I'm not. You know. I'm not disparaging religion or the church or anything. You do your thing. Shout out Palm Sunday. Shout out Palm Sunday. That's that's a good. That's always a good day. But to go and get the ash and like parade it, like oh, it's, is it's, Palm it's Sunday old. the beginning of Lent or the end? Dude, I couldn't even tell you. Ash Wednesday is the beginning. Schools for twelve years. Ash Wednesday is the beginning of Lent. Definitely is. Did we have to get ashes in high school? No, right? I think I didn't get ashes. I did. In school. We had a little mask. I didn't receive. I stopped receiving communion. I would go up like this, dude. I absolutely despise the no eating meat on Friday rule. I think it's total bullshit. What even gets me more mad about that is when people don't practice uh, like their faith all year long, but then they don't eat meat on Fridays. On Fridays. And like, As if God gives the, any fuck. Why is that the one thing to hold on to out of all that shit? Don't That's the meat. one thing I'm gonna I'm gonna abstain from meat for forty days on just on Fridays. I can eat it all other. I can eat it whenever I want. Just Fridays. Just on Fridays. Just to have the city. I'm gonna pizza. sacrifice having meat on one day of the week. Just to have the city pizza phone lines blinging on a Friday night, dude. It's bullshit. It's literally bullshit. It's all just something to say. I'm doing a thing. That's another thing I can't stand. People you know doing a stuff? thing. This is a full bitch fest. <laughs> people doing a thing. I know. I just I hate when people say. We did a thing. I did a thing today. <laughs> but it's like them getting their nose pierced. I did a thing today. Someone bought a house. We did a thing. <laughs> no, you bought a house. You got your nose pierced. Guys, I got my nose pierced today. Not did a thing. Got a new car. I did a thing today. <laughs> Guess like what I did? I woke up and I did a thing. Like it's low key. It's nothing. Get I did fuck a out thing. Of here. While we're at it, you're not winning that tattoo giveaway. <laughs> You're never going to win it. You're never going to win the tattoo giveaway. <laughs> no matter how many times you you're like never, it, post, share it. There's never been a winner. There's never <laughs> been a winner. No one's ever won a tattoo giveaway. You heard it here first. No one's ever won. No one's ever won. It's all you, fake news. You ain't going to be on the next season of Ink Master. Bro, on the podcast <laughs> page, we should just start giving out tattoo giveaways. We should just start giving out tattoo giveaways, bro. We'll get 8 million shares. People will just share it to oblivion. <laughs> Make sure you share this once a day for the next 14 and days and like people. every post Bro, we've ever really put out. It. I'll get tagged and they'll say, yeah, like this post, slap your father, tag 18 people, <laughs> make me a fucking dinner, send me an Xbox code, and then you, you might get entered into a raffle. Bro, speaking of that, wait that's a, a second. great scam. That's I want to say, scam. rest in peace to something real quick. The instant beef board. Because I think that tattoo giveaways would be going smack dab with yeah, the beef board if it was It'd there. It'd be nice to have it. Right there. Like a, like a nice instant beef board. Like yeah. a really nice one. Like maybe something on wheels. Adapt a little bit. Yeah. There's always something about getting Get together the- and putting shit on paper that really brings the crowd in. <laughs> Definitely. Um, I really think that's what we should do next time instead of a podcast. Just sit down, get some stuff on paper, really formulate our ideas yeah. first. I think... <laughs> I think it would definitely help, given how off the rails this episode was. Uh, wait, what were we just talking about? Well, we're getting into Lent now, and we're going to... No, we've we covered our uh, topics. We, we started off with people got well, attitudes. I was burning on something. Now we're on Lent. Burning on what? I don't know. I was, I was, I was burning hot about a topic. I kind of went into a nice little rant there. I think I needed to get... Even though it's been a great day, I needed to get like a little, a little chip off my shoulder, you know? The other day, I was eating chips, and one landed right on my shoulder. It was so poetic. What's poetic about that? Exactly. Chip on your shoulder. Damn. That would have been a great no limit uh comp. Yeah. Um So Lent. Reverse Lent. You want to go reverse Lent? We're going reverse Lent. I saw it today. Somebody posted it on um their story. It said reverse Lent. Instead of giving up something for forty days, I'm gonna pick a new vice to do for forty days. Now we don't necessarily have to go vices, but just something that's like not negative even, but just something that's probably bad for you. 
something that probably you wouldn't normally want to do for a 40 day stretch. What would you do? Reverse Lent. I would drink soda all day long for 40 <laughs> days. I would just drink soda. Wake that's up in the funny because people do give up soda. Yeah, and that's another up. one of those things. Doing a thing. I gave up soda. For yeah, Lent. I did a thing this year. Gave up soda all 40 days of Lent. <laughs> 40 days giving up soda is hilarious. Like, I didn't drink soda for 40 days. Well, Good, you fat I'm fog. addicted to meth. <laughs> you didn't drink fucking pop. Yeah, you abstained from Pepsi for 40 days. What's your favorite soda? Ginger ale, okay. Bro, ginger ale is fire. Dude, I'm telling you, this is no limit. Everything I do, everyone does way later, right, in life. So... I started drinking ginger ale like a year ago, right? Now everybody drinks ginger ale. I see it all. I go to the supermarket. Everyone's got ginger ale in their cart. Every single person will ginger ale. Like everyone has two things: ginger ale and gingivitis. Yeah, everyone's got gingivitis. I had it for all my whole life. Uh, yeah, dude. I don't know what happened. I feel like ginger ale when we were growing up, like nobody ever had ginger ale. It was like when you're sick, it's just like something you like. Yeah. Your belly's hurting. It's like an excuse. Dude, I love getting sick now. I'm like, give me a whole thing of saltine crackers and ginger ale. I'm gonna sit on my couch and eat it. Um. I feel like ginger ale's creeped in, creeped in like the top three of everybody. It's it's got to be the most popular soda out there. I honestly think that you should. Len already started, but you should start tomorrow. Only drink soda, no water, and just report back every week on how you're feeling. No just water. Just keep putting updates on the podcast the end of page. The <laughs> no water, all soda. All soda. I'll personally get you a couple two liters of ginger ale. I really, I think my body would go in the shock. <laughs> I've drank so much water and no soda for the past few years. Now, like, I, th- this kind of there's 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 some truth to this because I have I have picked up drinking soda this year as a new habit. Like, I kind of flirted with the idea in 2022, but then like this year I was like, why not? You know, like I I I've spent so many years since like being in high school where I was like heavier of like watching what I eat and like trying to like limit certain things and cutting th- certain things out completely. But like, dude, fuck all that. Like if I'm getting Chipotle, dude, I'm getting a root beer. Chipotle and root beer is the greatest mix of all time. And you have to get queso in your Chipotle. You have to get queso in your Chipotle and you have to get a fountain root beer with it. Mm. That's how that's that's how you secretly unlock the fucking code to Chipotle. Well, that's what you should do. I've been huge on it. Chipotle and soda. I've been eating Next Chipotle, 30 I've been eating Chipotle like three days a week with a root beer. It's amazing. I'm Ch- drinking a lot. I'm drinking a lot of soda. I'm I'm steering hard in the in the habit. But yeah, I, I would I would drink soda for forty days. That'd be a great like, uh, what's that thing called? Super size me. If I just like did like a documentary of me just drinking nothing but soda. It would be more no limit if you didn't eat anything. Just Pepsi, cola, just soda. corn syrup, high, f- high fructose corn syrup. For 30 something days now because Len already started. What would you pick up? I think what I would do, I was sitting here thinking about it. Now, I would love to do something like you said, like just go full sugar mode. Like I would just eat unlimited Skittles or something for 40 days. But because you already went with a sugar method, I'm going to go super no limit and say if if the challenge was that I did it for 40 days and somehow at the end of the 40 days I could just cold turkey stop it whatever it is because what I'm about to say it would be hard to do it for 40 days and then stop I think I'd smoke crack not even the not even trying to be funny that I said it a couple times earlier to keep the theme going throughout the pod I think I'd smoke crack for 40 days you would really smoke crack that would be your drug because, of choice crack because I imagine that if you somehow could Smoke crack for 40 days and cold turkey switch it off at the end of those 40 days that like you would somehow benefit from the energy that you had for those 40 days and were able to use. And then you just go back to a regular life. All of a sudden, 40 days hits. Somehow you're not addicted to crack anymore. But I wouldn't do it for real knowing that you would get addicted to crack. But the shit you could get accomplished in 40 days smoking crack is probably insane. Is that why it would be your drug of choice? Because you feel like you can get a lot accomplished on it? Yeah, like it wouldn't even it wouldn't even be about the high. I'm going super no limit and trying to find like a positive reason to do something bad for 40 days. And I feel like if you were somehow able to smoke crack and not be addicted at the end of the 40 days, you could accomplish so much. You would have no, unlimited so, no. energy for 40 days straight. Crack gives you energy like that? 
that's what crack is, bro. I thought they just like lift like fridges and stuff. I don't know if it gave you energy. I thought it just like it just made you stupid. Like it, it, you just defied the laws of physics. No, honestly, I feel like if you should, you, you should, your personality, dude, you should start doing crack <laughs> and don't quit. <laughs> don't quit, dude. If you started doing crack, you would never die. Someone like you, bro, you would do, you would go, you would at least creep into your hundreds if you started doing crack. I'm serious, dude. <laughs> be 90 years old, lighting up a glass pipe. You would never die. Sh- shout out Woody. Uh, the other day, he was at the subway or something, or like the bus stop, and someone was like, yo, can I, get, can I, get a, can I borrow your light? And he's like, yeah, sure. And the guy like free base crack right in front of him, like with his <laughs> lighter. How crazy is that? Could you imagine that? That's why you can't fucking ride the fucking subway. That's why you can't, for real. Uh... No, but that's me going super no limit though. And try- I think I could. I, I I think if I actually smoked crack today, I wouldn't need it tomorrow. If you went something realistic, I would go with what you said. Like I would just eat so terrible. I would eat so much sugar. But in a no limit fashion, I think in the right scenario, forty days of crack could help you. Well, like going back to mine real quick, I really think that. I'm starting to be of the mind that you should just eat and drink whatever you want, whenever you want. You should you shouldn't just let yourself go and be fat. If you're gonna if you're gonna live that lifestyle, you have you have to you have to put work into it. But like you shouldn't be like I'm not going to drink soda forever. Yeah. I'm not going to eat Skittles. like Skittles make me feel like shit. But like you hand me some Skittles, I'm eating them. You know I'm just gonna indulge forever because they do. Like, why not? Skittles do make you feel better. You eat bag too of many of them. Yeah, if you eat too many of them, it really does hurt. And I just want to say, if they're saying a smoking crack thing like, to get real no limit and deep, sometimes in life you got to just say stuff without even like thinking about it just to just say it. And maybe it does sound retarded, but you got to just let it out for the chance that it might be something crazy. And I think me saying that I would smoke crack for reverse Lent is one of those things. You I, feel just, com- I just had to air that out. You feel confidently in the fact that if you smoked crack legitimately, you would get addicted. Yes. Really? Everybody would. I wouldn't. I had somebody tell me before that their dad told him that they smoked crack one time. Like, him and his friends smoked crack. And the next day, he woke up and wanted crack so fucking bad. And he didn't smoke it. But he kind of realized, like, if I just chose today, I want to smoke crack so fucking bad today. And if I chose today to smoke crack again, I would be hooked on crack. But I, but he chose on the second day not to. It's probably so good. <laughs> you know? Like crack, meth, heroin, they're probably so good. I feel like a superhero. But at this point, there's probably like, like they talk about like the difference between like a cocaine and crack or something. Cocaine's like cleaner, but crack is like more just like raw energy. Like dude, not with insane. fentanyl no more. But there's probably a drug out there. Like think a dude like John Jones, right? Like he's 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 been known for doing coke, right? Now, I feel like he's the type of dude he would seek out the energy that crack gives you. Like, he's that hyped up of a guy that, whether it was by smoking crack or by some other drug that, because of the type of athlete he is, he would have access to, he would find it somewhere. He's seeking out that extra level of energy that crack would supply. Can you imagine if they let MMA fighters smoke crack? How nuts those fights would go, dude. <laughs> they would be wild. They'd be, like, flying off the top of the cage and shit, like, spearing into each other, like, jousting at the top of their heads. <laughs> what does this podcast come to? I just said I would smoke crack for 40 days. I don't know. I don't <laughs> like the idea of you doing it, though. <laughs> That's horrible. It's horrible what you just did. I mean, it kind of just farted out anyway. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> See, something like that, though. To uh, soiree us into a different topic. Something like that will never be able to be done. A fart in the microphone by an AI. Oh my god, yeah. I wanted to talk today about you don't know that though. AI created art. And the reason that I wanted to talk about it is because... Wow, what a what a segue that was. <laughs> you farting in the microphone? Yeah, like, I, like the fact that you were able to turn that into anything No, because you would never be able to get that on an AI created podcast right because there literally is that's how far ai created art has gone that it's gone from that thing that everybody was posting for a while where you could i forget what exactly what it's called uh where you could type in a couple keywords and it would give you like an, a painting yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, right? it's like a um it, it's a computer 
it has a name to it. Right. But yeah, you type in what it is. It's, you type in what you want to see, and it, it spits out the image of what you type. It in. is going all the way from that to where you could literally type in, and this is the example that I saw earlier, like the presidents, the last three presidents doing a podcast, and it will spit you out an audio recording of Trump, Biden, and Obama doing a podcast, and they'll just have a made-up topic, and they'll all talk about it. And I saw a few of them where it was like different characters, like like Trump, Joe Rogan, and and Obama, or like a mix of different ones. Yeah. But it's just insane that you can, they have gotten to that far, that you can literally just type in that, the last three presidents doing a podcast, and it will give you at least a couple minutes of exactly what you would think it would be. Now, you can take exactly but what that is. But they'll never be able to fart in the microphone. They can create it. AI. Gen- no way. They can't create that. That's going to be the death of real podcast or real art in general. When you can get that intricate. I think you can. But what happens when they start taking that technology, right? Imagine to- typing in. I don't mean to keep cutting you off, but imagine typing in. Biden, Trump, uh, Obama podcast, comma, one of them farts in the microphone at 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah, what if Obama just went <laughs> and just put the microphone? Like, they can create all that. But uh, when they, like, deep fake, because that's what, like, you can have that deep fake technology and stuff. Yeah. They deep fake Joe Biden saying we declare war on Russia and Putin sees it and just blows nukes off. Like, it's it, it's only going to keep getting better and better and better and better and better and better and better. And better. To the point where it's going to become completely impossible to indistinguish a real thing versus an AI created thing. Yes. Like, say somebody hacked, <coughs> all they have to do. I think that's far down the somebody line. Somebody could really create that video and hack CNN. And CNN blasts out all these tweets of the president holding a press conference saying that he declares war on X. And it just circulates and circulates and circulates and circulates. It doesn't need a lot of time. Yeah. Something like that does not need a lot of time, especially if it comes from CNN. You're right? talking about like if you got if you got somebody to make you a fake video and then hack into CNN and post yeah, like this a person fake had video. a plot like how 9-11 was a terrorist attack. <laughs> this was a terrorist attack. <laughs> like a cyber terrorist attack, right? Where this was all done electronically and digitally and through computers with no weapons. Um, that would result in, could, which could possibly result in war or, you know, nuclear warfare that could kill the lives of thousands and thousands of people, right? Mm-hmm. Just from clicks of buttons. Um, that's a very real possibility, I feel like. Now, like that exact scenario is a little far-fetched, but I'm saying like somebody using... Super real, hard to distinguish technology. Um, to deep fake like a president or like even anybody doing anything, like what's to stop them from making, you know, just like slander videos? Like, what if somebody wants to slander somebody, and they they deep fake a video of them doing something embarrassing or like literally anything at all? You know, what if it just got so good in the future? Think about the things that like we can do on TikTok. And, like, the editing we can do on our phones. Like, what's to say in 100 years it's not just so easy to make your own deep fakes, just like it is to make a meme on your phone? There's a new, <clears throat> to bring in another avenue to the, that it's happening in, there's a new, uh, you know how we record in Logic, right? And then there's, like, GarageBand, there's, yeah. there's fucking, what's the one that, the Pro Tools, like, that one. There's other stuff for making beats, like FL Studio, um... The list goes on. There's a new one called BandLab where you can record on your phone. <laughs> they just merge names. Yeah, BandLab. And I'm telling you, I f- I came across somehow following this random artist. Like, forget I forget what his name even is, but he would always be posting these videos from an app that I never seen, and it was BandLab. But he was claiming that he was doing all this on his phone, like he was recording the audio into his phone and and making the song. Now normally. Anything like that, bro, like if you if you recorded audio into your phone and you put it on GarageBand or put it on Logic and try to do anything to it, it would sound like trash. Yeah. But this shit would sound insane, like insanely good. And BandLab just had such good, like, it had good effects, like that that it knew 
it knew how to take your fucking shitty recording that you put into your phone and do certain stuff to it because they they kind like it has the intelligence to know that it's coming in from a phone speaker. So then, when you know what the kind of the dynamics of that are, you can design your plugins or your stuff that you put onto the audio to make that specifically sound good. That's what I'm saying. And it actually sounded so good. And now more and more artists are using it, and it's becoming a question of like, are people now? It's another example. It's the same thing with a podcast where, like, it is good. It's good enough on BandLab. Like, it's good enough that people are going to hear it and be like, this kind of sounds good. But you'll, it, it still, at the end of the day, will never be able to compare to a song that is, like, created in the best program with real instruments and, like, real good recording techniques. It will never measure up. It will always be good enough for certain people to say it's good. But it'll never measure up to the to the cream of the crop of the of the real thing. Right now. But what I'm saying is think about a hundred years into the future. A hundred years ago it was nineteen twenty three. Like they were like like films were like new. Like just the just just the art of film and the idea of movies was like new. Yeah. Right? Think about what our phones can do <laughs> now. Like you can do all that shit right now. In a hundred years, the advancement that will take place, you can probably make entire albums, like full albums of music that sound amazing, all using your phone. I'm sure it's all going to be possible. Yeah. You know, I'm sh- like how that computer exists, right? Whether you can you can type in, you know, Joe Blow eating a sandwich on my dad's head, mm-hmm. right? And like an AI computer will make that. That's going to be something you'll be able to just type into your phone. It'll be an app. You know, like, you know, it probably already is image okay. generator. You just type in, you know, Squidward eating my shoe and it comes up, you know, anything you want to see, you can just, just, just make it my book report, eh, you know? Yeah. But you think it'll ever be able to, to measure up to something real? Like, yes. would you ever be able to, you're not going to get shitty quality audio. Think about cameras. Think about the camera. When they introduced the camera on a cell phone, dude, it was the worst yeah, fucking I thing I was ever. thinking about now that. Now people get rid of cameras. To now use I was phone. thinking about that. We literally use the latest iPhone to record our stuff because it records certain things at the same level on any good camera. Stuff off their phone. What's exactly. What's to say a hundred years from now, people will not, like directors will not use their cell phone to shoot a movie. Yeah. A hundred years from now, I could see that for sure. It's a director be, using his cell phone to shoot a movie. Everything is, is going to become Easily, easier to ex- uh, access and simplified, right? As time goes on, we're going to be more acquainted with these technologies. And people are going to be like, you're going to be born out of the womb and you're going to have a fucking Google Glass on your eyeballs. Do you're, you it's think just, it's going to ramp up? Do you think that an AI, this is a question specifically that I had about, do you think that an AI created anything? Like we talked about all the different avenues it could be in. So an AI created anything could ever be the best. Like the number one, yes. like, so let's say those. Dude, people a, let's think say AI, AI can flat out replaces a okay. civilization. Would you ever see a world? Let's say, because they can do like specifically. Uh, so Joe Rogan's podcast, probably number one podcast in the world, right? And you can type in into those apps, Joe Rogan podcast with X, Y, or Z with Dave Chappelle, and it'll it'll give you like a, a fake podcast between them. You think it would ever develop to a point where? the AI version of a Joe Rogan podcast would be number one sure. on the leaderboards and the real one will be somewhere down the I line. Mean, Cause I mean, because the AI is coming up with better shit, more yeah, interesting shit because it's all made listen up. To the real Joe Rogan over like a fake. Exactly. That's why, the, the that's why I don't think that an AI thing, maybe not in the podcast world, but maybe in another thing, like an AI created could song, be, I could believe the greatest that. greatest artist in the world. Yes. I could believe that eventually, like in music, there will be a technology that AI could just make a song that is better than everything else. Yes, I agree. Like, I without agree. a doubt. That, something that humans can't con- come up with the concept for. Like, just just melody. Like, something that the yeah. AI if can If you programmed it with so all quickly, this musical knowledge, you know, it would come yeah, up with something perfectly crazy. Perfectly algorithm to, or a perfect algorithm to come up with the perfect song every time. Using different, you know, keys and sounds and stuff like that. This is the best song for this key or in this key. And this is the best song for these notes in this key. It's definitely possible. Every Anything is possible. Anything is possible. I'm sure the government has black ops technology we don't know about. They could probably already do this stuff. I'm sure they can teleport. They can time travel. No, they probably can't. 
You think they could teleport? I feel like that might be real. To transfer your mass and energy to another place. I don't know. Why I do feel you like think that's it something could be that real? could actually exist. Right now. Like in Austin Powers, you know, when like they jump into the thing and like go back to like, like it's like time travel. Like there's got to be something like humans like go into that transfers their energy to a specific place. A plane. A plane. <laughs> yeah. Sure. That's what they want to be. I mean, it takes takes a couple of hours, but you get over there. If that's what they want to do. What's really the difference between a plane and teleportation? Let's be honest. If you if you were hanging off the side of a plane wing and the plane took off, how long do you think it would take for you to fall off? <laughs> All right, now we're getting down to the fucking to the wire. Tom Cruise did pretty good in that shit. movie. Mission Impossible. Hanging off a plane, and it took off. I think I'd hold on for like fifteen seconds. That's and then be, it. Yeah, dude, you're up, bro. Once it takes off, it's going over a hundred. I wouldn't go off though. I would never fall <laughs> yeah. off. I would never fall. I got good grip. Come on now. My my no like like this part of my hands, like the grip part, <laughs> it's really strong. The plane like if I was hooked into a window like that, dude, I'm never gonna let Once go. it's in the air, the plane's gonna be going over three hundred miles an hour in like thirty seconds. Yeah. <laughs> you think you'd hold on forever? If I had the window clamp, bro, like that. That's a thing where, because of adrenaline and all that, we know about that kind of stuff. I wish we could find out somehow. Because I feel like a person. I flew to Vegas. Like a I feel like a person flight. could actually hold on for. They might be able to hold on for a way longer time than we think. Like yeah. just off pure adrenaline of the situation. Just not letting go, because you know if you let go, you're dead. The second just you let go, never you're, letting you're never go. Live again. Yeah. Would you ever skydive? No. Yeah, dude. I don't like that. none of that stuff. I always fuck say that. stuff like that. People who go out deep into the ocean, that's not where humans are supposed to be. That's just not where we're supposed to be at. What are you doing? You're not Bless supposed your to ju- you're not supposed to jump out of a plane. You're not supposed to be floating in the sky. I don't care what you got on your floating back. In the sky. You should not be doing that. That is not what we're here for. You don't No, you believe in planes. <laughs> Like, you believe in the idea of going into a plane and getting yeah, home. Yeah, yeah, You're not scared of being in a plane. No, no, no. I think they're pretty scary. They are scary. But I have some type of a trust in an Airbus. I know. I, 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 I don't. And I think it's crazy that, you know, society as a whole around the entire world just thinks that that is common transportation. Like, actually being suspended 30,000 feet in the air in a combustion engine. Um... But I think it's crazy. In 1923, imagine showing people in 1923 a commercial air flight. The yeah, way it well, is today. in 1950, 60, whatever, they had them and you could smoke in the plane. Yeah. Let's go back to smoking on planes. Smoking indoors? Smoking indoor sections? Yeah, let's bring it back. I think it would make people harder. I think people, get, people started definitely getting a lot softer once they took those out. Once they shun the that smokers was step out of everybody's, one. yeah, because everybody had to inhabit that same hard life and that same hard smoke. You know, everybody had to pay for the decisions of other people. Now everybody can just flippantly just fucking fuck off. That's why everybody's rude because no one has to pay attention to anybody's consequences or anybody's manners. Yep, everybody can just do their own thing. Now the reverse lens Nobody's coming smoking up. Around it's me. a perfect time to bring it back. What? Bring it back in for a reverse lens, but then just boom, tricked you, never leaving. Smoking's back. Smoking crack is back. All of it. If I could, that's that'd be another reverse Lent thing. I would, I would, I would just indulge in alcohol and cigarettes for an entire forty days, consequence free. Yeah, but that would be another thing. You'd have to know for sure you could quit the cigarettes at the end of the forty. I could quit. The, I I can always quit. Cigarettes. Yeah, do it. I've dude. I want to see you for the next thirty something days. Smoke cigarettes and drink soda. Only. I would feel horrible. <laughs> Your mouth would be so dry every morning. Dude, I would feel And you'd horrible. have to drink a soda when would, you wake up. I would probably age so long. Or I was I would I would age so much. Bro, I mean. your mouth would be so dry in the morning and you would have to drink a soda. My just teeth would be so yellow. Yeah, like first thing, like just dry ass mouth with a Pepsi, a twenty ounce Pepsi. Like the you know like the twenty ounce bottles of real syrupy? Yeah. Like one of them. Yeah. Like a, there's nothing worse than a warm twenty ounce bottle. <laughs> Horrible. We're riding out on that. A warm 20 ounce. A warm 20 ounce? <laughs> nah, go ahead. 
A warm 20 ounce? What, do you have to piss on the road? There's a lot of them in my car over the years. A warm 20 ounce? I'm no stranger to those. <laughs> Maybe a topic for another time is the one time I abandoned my car under the bridge and the shit that was inside of it. Well, I remember when we were kids, there used to just be, like, cars staged around the area that we would just use. <laughs> with smoking. <laughs> like, there was just, like, there was just abandoned cars that never moved that we just knew that we would just go and smoke. <laughs> yeah. Low-key, that's fucking scary. Yeah, that's funny. <clears throat> A few of them, too. You got anything to say to the fans? No. Wow, episode 89, we're inching closer to that 100 mark. 90 next. 90 next. next. milestone. 90 next. We're stepping on 90 next. Yeah, I'm about to flex. Like, I'm on P90X. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the couch eating wine and Chex Mix. I got a bitch named Adriana Chechnik. Sounds like she plays tennis. <laughs> 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 I tell Danny he's fired like he's on The Apprentice. I don't know what Len is, just what reverse Len is. <laughs> I got a bro named Lennon. <laughs> a sister named Janice. She's a janitor. <laughs> Her husband's name's Clarence. <laughs> it's apparent they would have been good parents. <laughs> Last Saturday, they forgot to do the errands. <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> Alright episode 89 <laughs> <laughs> Say your thing dude Peace Love you. It, 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 it's, it's a no, a no limit, limit where we live in, in.